Another issue is electronegativity. And the electronegativity is the ability of an element to attract electrons within a covalent bond. This table here shows the electronegativity of the elements. And what I want you to notice is fluorine is the highest. It is the most electronegative element. And electronegativity increases as you go across and decreases as you go down. So there's a periodic trend. Fluorine is the highest. Oxygen is a close second. Um, and then nitrogen coming in at three. Chlorine is also at three, but fluorine is the highest. So what that means is in a bond, if the two elements have the same electronegativity, what you end up with is a nonpolar covalent bond. Neither one of them attracts electrons more than the other, so they're evenly split. Now, if they are not evenly split, for example, chlorine and hydrogen. Remember, chlorine um, was 3 electronegativity. A hydrogen, I think, is 2.1 in electronegativity. And so they're not the same. Chlorine is more electronegative. And so it's going to attract the electron more than the hydrogen. Even though they're sharing the electron, they're not sharing it equally. And so that's called a polar covalent bond. It has a partially negative end and a partially positive end. And we rep represented it by this lower case delta. That's what that letter is. Delta minus or delta plus, depending on if it's the positive or negative end. And the last scenario is an ionic bond where there's a complete transfer. So we think about the sodium just gives its electron to the chlorine because the chlorine wants it so much more than the sodium does that it basically is always around the chlorine. And so that's the idea of an ionic bond. So how do you tell the difference? Generally, if it's 0 to 0 0.4 difference, so they're pr exactly the same or pretty close, we consider it a nonpolar bond. If it's more than that, 0.5 to 1.8, it's considered a polar covalent bond. And if it's really great, 1.9 and higher, we call it ionic. However, I think it's easier to just think about ionic as a metal with a nonmetal. They're usually in that range, and that's something that you can um, remember based on the periodic table, and you don't have to have exact electronegativity. So the way I think of it is if they're different, it's a polar covalent bond. If it's a metal and a nonmetal, it's an ionic bond. If they're the same element, it's nonpolar. Let's do this example where we determine the electro, um, the polarity of these bonds. So carbon to oxygen. You notice carbon is 2.5 and oxygen is 3.5. So they're not the same. And the oxygen is going to be the negative end. The carbon is the positive end. Oxygen to oxygen, well, those are the same. And so this one is nonpolar. And if you want to pause the slide here and try the rest of these on your own, that's a good idea. Between hydrogen and oxygen, oxygen is more polar. Oh, it's more a negative. So that's our partial negative. Hydrogen is our po partial positive. Nitrogen is 3. Hydrogen is 2. So here, nitrogen is our negative. Hydrogen is our positive. Between nitrogen and fluorine, nitrogen is 3, fluorine is 4, so fluorine is the negative. As it always is, nitrogen is positive. And chlorine to chlorine, they're the same element, so this one is nonpolar. I want you to notice in this molecule, the nitrogen was the partial negative. In this molecule, the nitrogen is the po partial positive, and it just depends on what it's paired with. And that's true of most elements, that they're either positive or negative depending on what they're paired with.
So finding polarity of bonds is pretty simple, but it gets a little more complicated with molecules. The presence of one or more polar bonds in a molecule doesn't always result in a polar molecule. A polar molecule is one with polar bonds that add together. They do not cancel each other out, so they form a net dipole. And basically, this is about symmetry. So consider the carbon dioxide molecule. Between carbon and oxygen, that is a polar bond. We have our negative end at the oxygen, our positive at the carbon. But we have the exact same thing at this end. Here's our negative at the oxygen and positive at the carbon. And so what happens is they cancel each other out. There's not a negative end and a positive end to this molecule. It's symmetrical, it's balanced. So is this a polar molecule? No. The two polar bonds cancel each other out. Now if we compare that with water, water is a different situation. Water, we do have a positive at the hydrogen, negative at the oxygen, and same thing over here, positive at the hydrogen, negative at the oxygen. But since they're not right across from each other, they do not cancel each other out. So if you imagine two ropes pulling like this, that would end up in a net pull. And so this one, yes, it is polar because it is not symmetrical. The carbon dioxide, these two poles would cancel each other out. The carbon wouldn't move. And so that one is nonpolar. So polarity is about the symmetry. So if you look at this molecule right here, hydrogen to chlorine, you've got a positive and a negative end to it. That's polar. If you consider this one, nitrogen with the three hydrogens, since those hydrogens are not across from each other, you end up with a positive and a negative end. So that's polar. But in this molecule where it's true, so this one is trigonal pyramidal. Where this one is trigonal planar. And so that's the difference. These are all straight across from each other, so they cancel each other out. Symmetrical, nonpolar. Same with the carbon tetrachloride. You've got the four, chl four chlorines around the carbon. They're all pulling the same amount, and so they cancel each other out, and that one is nonpolar. But imagine if three of these were hydrogens instead. Now they are not all the same. So the chlorine is the negative end here, where the hydrogens are the positive end. And so you have a polar molecule, not symmetrical, so it's polar. So let's go back to this chart and notice how polarity fits in. Notice the top row, the tetrahedral, the trigonal planar, and the linear shapes, if they have the same atom at each location, then they're symmetrical, and so they're nonpolar. So all of these are nonpolar if all the x, x being the atoms uh, attached to the central molecule, if they're all the same, it's nonpolar. If any one of those atoms is different, then it's polar. These other two shapes, trigonal pyramidal and bent, and remember our bent looks something like this. The distinction about these is as you go around the central atom, it's not all the same. So I go around the central atom, I have fluorine, 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 electron pair. Not the same, so it's polar. Same here, I have hydrogen, hydrogen, electron pair, electron pair, so it is polar. They're not the same. Whereas this one, I go around, I've got hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. 
all the same. So that is nonpolar. Um, and so that's how you determine from the shape if it's polar or nonpolar. So here are some more molecules to try. Determine if the following molecules are polar or nonpolar. Now to do this, you're going to have to start with the Lewis structure, then figure out the shape, and then determine the polarity. So pause it here, try these molecules, and then Turn it back on and see the answers. Essential skills. Draw electron dot formulas. Identify and label negative and positive ends of polar covalent bonds given electronegativity values or using the periodic trend in electronegativity. Know the periodic trend for electronegativity that it increases across a row and decreases down a column. Recognize the shape of a molecule from the dot formula and identify polar and nonpolar molecules.